Good evening, everybody. My name is Cameron. Um, we're starting things a little bit early. We're doing some research on this cocktail that we're about to do, and Anna and I are attempting to discuss the origins of it. Anna, what have you found so far? Uh, it looks like it's from Disney's California Adventure, and there's two locations for it. I don't see anything related to the California Adventure. I see, I see news updates to Disney Standard Bar and Lounge yeah, menu. I see lounge. the Hakuna yeah. Matata cocktail, which it's got an orange on it. That can't be the right one. That's what not year the right. Was that book written? This book, this book was written in. Oh, where's your notes? L.A. New York Disney Editions by Pam Brandon and the Disney year. Chefs. Where's the year? Trying to find the year. Where the year at? Where are you year at? Where is your copyright date? Why do you have to make it so difficult? Maybe it's in the back of the book. Oh, maybe on the... Okay. 2016. 2016? That works. This is from two, 2017. But 2017? From Martini at the Storytellers Cafe. Storytellers Cafe. Um... Yeah. Banana Spiced Rum Martini Recipe. Or the Hearthstone Lounge. Or the Hearthstone Lounge. Storyteller. What, what website are you on? Mouse Planet? I told you I know how to do this. Mouse Planet. Oh, I found a couple of videos. Oh, really? Banana Spiced Rum Old Fashioned with Australian Rum by Steve the Bartender on YouTube. Drink Stuff has five banana cocktails. You have an awesome, like, Hawaiian shirt going on there. Storyteller. Okay, what was the website? Mouse Planet. Mouse Planet. Mouse Planet. There's a lot of just Planet. Disney information guides. Banana. That Spiced rum martini. Make sure you put the banana spiced rum in quotation marks. Banana toasting summer at Disney California Adventure? Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's the one. I told you. Mouse planet. We have a we live on a planet that has mice on it. Who knew? That's horrible. Toasting summer at Disney California Adventure. Hello ad for Instagram by Todd Pickering, contributing writer 2017. Summer is here and there's nothing better to beat the heat than to enjoy an adult beverage. Well, Tommy, Todd, Todd, your name is Todd. Todd, you're right about that. The drink stands. A Hollywood land, there are cocktails available. The Summer of Heroes promotion, let's focus on the permanent bars all year round. The drink stands, two cozy places, Cozy Cone Motel, Cars Land. Oh, like with the big traffic cone on top of it? Yeah, that's a Cozy Cone. That's the Cozy Cone. Interesting. That's one of them. Lucky Fortune Cookery, Cochina de Cucamonga. Where have I heard Cucamonga? What Disney? What Disney was that? Honestly, it I remember sounds Cucamonga. Like something to do with, uh, Lion King. Cucamonga. Apparently, the Cozy Cone Motel is a recreation of Sally's Motel from the Cars films. Oh, okay. It was a Cars reference. Well, they have Cars Land in California Adventure. I have to search this page for the banana, 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 banana split. The hotel bars. Okay. There are three places to grab a cocktail in the Grand Californian Hotel, which I don't think I've ever actually been to. Have we been to the Grand Californian? It's in California. That would explain why I've never actually it's been to the, the Grand, Grand Californian. Floridian. I have been to the Grand, Grand Floridian because I've been to the Florida Disney World. You also have Cove Bar in uh, California, in California Disney that also serves this one. Cove Bar? I don't see it on there. Um, it's not on there. Grand like Californian, accessible by entering from the inside of the Disney California Adventure, right near Grizzly River Run, the Hearthstone Lounge, and the Restaurant Storytellers Cafe. Oh, I saw the Storytellers. Yes, I saw that I on my Google that. search. You did. I have Coke Bar in Disney's California Adventure, Hearthstone Lounge, yeah. and Snake House 255 Lounge at Disneyland. It's a Disneyland cocktail. I don't think it's served at Disney. Because uh, I was going to say, I have literally never seen the Banana Spice Rum Martini in any Disney area. It's a shame they don't have oh, it in oh, Disney oh, World, it oh. seems. Oh, uh, oh, more room food? I found something on Walt well, Disney World News Today. Hmm. Find it. It's one of their review days, so. Interesting. In the Wilderness Lodge. I think it's there. Let me just double check. Wilderness Lodge. Well, apparently, this is a cocktail that you can get at Walt Disney Parks and Resorts pretty much anywhere. Sorry. California. Maybe. Yep. Maybe the Grand... They have it at the Walt... Uh, the Walt... The Wilderness Lodge. <laughs> Territory Lounge in Wilderness Lodge. Territory you? Lounge in the Wilderness Lodge in Florida, Orlando, Orlando, Florida, Disney World. Yes, correct. Okay, so if we had to state it succinctly, where does this cocktail come from? It comes from all over Disney, apparently. And it seems that there's only- it in Dining Hall in Disney Port Orleans. 
Port Orleans. It does not I've look been like there it's either. in the. Um... Oh, oh, it oh. might have just been added to. Something sci-fi dining in theater. Interesting. Uh, the sci-fi dine in theater. Yeah, you went there once, remember? Did I? Yeah, it was the car one where we were all like in that car and we watched those really shitty. Oh, oh, it's like the dinner is it's a drive-in movie theater, except it's a sit-in dine in drive in movie theater. Does that sound right? Does that track? That seems to track. It's I think. so it's a recreation of the 1950s like big drive-ins. And so you have really old horror films but they're like yeah, bad yeah, yeah. horror films and there's just a I just remember sitting there in my in my little like surround table drive-in dine-in car and thinking like what is playing on the television? I don't think I care. <laughs> it was great. I don't know what you're talking the about. The food was okay. It was like burgers and stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's supposed to be that old ass dine-in. They just changed the menu of it, I think. Interesting. Oh, this is from 2016, so it was also there. Interesting. Movie and drink. Oh, apparently they got a Fernet Branca um, cocktail in the Napa, the Napa Rose. That sounds cool. I'm going to take a picture of that so I remember that for later. And in any case, I think in the first... How long have we gone? <laughs> we spent about five-ish minutes attempting to figure out the origin of today's cocktail. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the the bar. No matter where you are, if the sun is rising where you are, it's it's nighttime over here. Don't drink in the morning. You, you shouldn't be drinking alcohol before Don't touch that. 10 o'clock a.m. You know what? Yeah, what am I saying? I'm not your parents. You can do whatever you want to. You want to drink in the morning? To, please take precautions. Shower beer? Totally okay. Shower martini? Totally okay. Shower shot of Everclear or more? Also totally okay. Just live within your limits. Know your limits. You know, do that thing that you do so well, which is exist, you pretty old thing. That was weird. Um, tonight's cocktail is from a book that I managed to find in one of my other various compartments um, next, juxtaposing the bar cocktail area. Not one of the cocktail books that I would consider my own. It's a delicious Disney sweet, tarts, sweet treats book that Anna, I don't know where she got this one from. Christmas. Christmas, mommy. she got it from her mommy. But in the front, the top, like, in the first, like, dozen pages, there's, like, three cocktail recipes. And as it turns out, we can make one of them. So I guess this is considered a, it's a Disney staple? Disney staple, co staple cocktail? It can be found. there's no real cocktails that are stapled at Disney because Disney It's certainly not Disney themed. It's just a Disney cocktail. There's no theming associated with it. There's no mouse ears. There's no there's no reference to the Fab Five or any movies aside from, I guess, the hotels that it appears in. It appears in the Cars restaurant, hotel, near the Cars hotel, I guess. The it appears in Florida. The ones are the uh, food stands. Oh, the food stands. Yeah, it's inside Cars Land, the California Adventure. Uh, oh, I didn't know it was a Cars Land. Of course I wouldn't know that. I've never been to California. We should go to California. Who's in California? Can I hang with you in California? I'll pay for the trips and stuff. I'll, I'll take us out for dinner. It'll be a really, really great time. Holla at the West Coast. I should put these grapes away. They're not themed to the cocktail. The Banana Spiced Rum Martini. A drink that apparently makes its way around various areas of the Disney World resorts, whether you're on the West Coast or the East Coast. There are no fancy frilly ears associated with it. There's no oddly placed Disney puns or any sort of side-eyed compliments or insults thrown at our greatest and most excellent CEO, Bob Chapek, who is sticking hey, around for... What's that? Bob Paycheck? Yeah, is that what we're calling he, him now? He literally just like takes everyone's money. It's great. It's so much fun. <laughs> He'll be staying there for like three more years. A little context on that guy. I don't know too much about... I mean, I know quite a bit about Disney, but not as much as my lovely fiance, the Disney Kwan, Disney Queen. She is not very happy with Chapex regime, aka Bob Pay Paycheck. Bob Paycheck? Bob Paycheck. <laughs> slightly slightly <laughs> difficult to say. Um, but yeah, she's not a fan, so therefore I'm not a fan. And he's sticking around for three more years, and I thought I used my power of my Disney stock to say no, but um, I am well, merely we one voice. Well, out basically everyone that's on the board right now because they voted him to remain because they think he's doing a great job. I don't think I can do that. I can't do that. I am only one man. If you have stock in it, you can vote. I him. have the voting power of a small, average man with a large voice. At least that's what I'm calling myself. And I say... I don't really know what your deal is, Chapek, but I'm not a fan of you so far. I'm not a fan. So the other thing is a lot of this came out, so like what he's been doing is kind of rolling out certain decisions that Iger left, such as Genie Plus and like 
just cutting a lot of the parks division. He was in charge of the parks before, but the entertainment division has gone downhill really fast since oh. he took over. We don't like that. I want so to be more entertained. So a lot of the atmosphere, um, also, like, they delayed the, so there was the whole move to, um, they were supposed to move all of the Imagineers from California to Florida, so a lot of people quit, or a lot of them have, like, sold their homes to move, and they just delayed it about four years, which means people that quit early are very frustrated because they could have stayed working there for longer, and people that already sold their houses and were looking in Florida to move already are kind of screwed. So, you know, it's great. They're doing I mean, great. Personally, I don't think I would want to live in the, I guess, <laughs> basically sovereign nation that is be North Walt Disney, Disney World, Florida. Orlando, Florida. No, I wouldn't be a fan of that. I'm sure it's very expensive. To, actually, I wonder if it's more expensive to live in the Disney World regional area than it would be in just California if in general. If you live in Celebration, technically that's Disney owned and it's a higher <laughs> price, but it's not higher than California. Isn't Celebration like a terrible town to live in? I've, that's what I've that's what I've heard. It started rough. Interesting. It is still not great because it is expensive since it is on close proximity to the world. It um when it first came out, a lot of people called it whitewashing. Oof. Because there's such a high tax bracket. There's a higher. I don't think it's a tax bracket, but like the property taxes are higher mm -hmm. just because it's you know very valuable land. So you locked a lot of people that Disney been on Disney a assigns a high price tag to things. And then seems. on top of that, you have like Golden Oaks, and uh, that's where people start getting like, you guys are crazy if you think this is okay. But you know, it's would like you a, do it? Would you live in Celebration? Would actually, you live in like, Golden Oaks? People, when they first brought up the fact that you could live to Disney, I was like, I don't want to live in Disney though. That sounds like oversaturation. That is the first time that like I was really adamant about like that's the one thing I don't think I'd want to do. If I were to move down to Florida, I would want to move like close to Disney, but mm -hmm. not to the point where it's like this is my backyard. Yeah. Can you imagine the fireworks every night? I can't sleep well anyways. I can barely deal with the motorcyclists that decide to grace our presence by driving by at odd hours of the day, morning, and various other times of a uh, 24-hour period. I don't know if I could realize... I mean, at the very least, it would be the same time every night. Because consistency could work. Yeah, I guess you can get used to it. Maybe, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Faces! Pink eye stumps, faces. It might actually be feces. I don't know how to pronounce that word. Either way, one way is disgusting, and one way is probably not disgusting. I don't. I don't have any faces out there that I know is disgusting. I haven't seen a disgusting face any time in my life. They're all beautiful in their own special ways. Interestingly enough, celebration, Disney World. I don't know. Seems too expensive. Seems a little overhyped. I don't know if I would do that. I don't know if I would. No. No. No, she wouldn't do it. She wouldn't do it. In any case, let's move to North Carolina. Let's move to North Carolina. I thought you were gonna say, "Let's move into the co let's move into the cocktail," because that's what we're doing. We were talking about Disney, though. It's technically in a Disney book. It doesn't seem any Disney-like. But enough about my complaints and whatnot. Some people are ugly, admittedly. Hey, I'd say that I'm an ugly from certain perspectives. I wouldn't say that I'm the but most attractive man on the planet. Ugly. No, Anna, I'm not ugly. I'm admittedly ugly. I'm saying I'm ugly. I may not actually be ugly from your point of view, but I could. You know, I think that there are parts of my face that are ugly. Currently, the entire upper side of my back is very ugly because I am extremely sunburned back there and it's just starting to peel off. Very disgusting. Uh, disgusting details. Disgustingly ugly details. Although some people, I guess, would be into that. It's kind of pink back there now. Pink, red. It's, it's very red. It is very, very red. Anyway, let's jump right in. Banana Spiced Rum Martini, described as rich, smooth flavors of cream, cinnamon, vanilla, banana, and rum. A sweet cocktail pairs well with dessert or can stand on its own as a sophisticated final course. A final course of what, I guess? I, I guess you could use this as a it's nice, like, after dinner thing. Menus. It's not a dessert menu it's thing? On a dessert. Oh, it is on a dessert menu. So that might be why. It's gonna be sweet. It's gonna be great. Put some of your back into the cocktail. Ooh. Ew, no! Please don't! It's actually not peeling off. I thought it was peeling a little it bit, but it's peeling, really but well. Not in the parts that I'm touching. No. Nah, maybe next week. We'll see how far. We'll see how far it progresses until then. I am gonna make. I need my cocktail shaker. That's what I need. I need my cocktail shaker. That's a blast. Well, I put the ingredients in here, dearest. Silly, silly. No, I'm not going insane. Not today. Although there are many things in this world that could make me insane. Uh, admittedly, a, D a Disney cocktail is probably not going to be one of them. I'm going to save this metal can. I'll put some ice into it later. But first, let's measure out some ingredients. I need my measuring majigger, which 
It's not over here. Where is my measuring bajigger? No, I put it over there. Where did you put it? Oh, it's in here. It's in this container. I found it. I found it. What I need... The first thing I need... Oh, this is a very easy cocktail to make. It's one ounce of horchata cream liqueur. I have... I have some of that. Let's go for that first. One ounce or about 30 milliliters of... I've got... I've got chila. Horchata cinnamon cream made with sweet cream and real vanilla. I've had this in my freeze, uh, my refrigerator for I think the longest time. I don't use it very often because it's very cinnamony and I just don't have very many cinnamony cocktails to be perfectly honest. Now actually what I'm gonna do today, oh, uh, can you do the flipperoonies with the bottle? Not with a bottle, I mean, I can do it with a bottle. Let's take a bottle that I'm not very happy with. I have a cap bottle of Captain Morgan. Can we do the flipperoonies? Flippy. <laughs> Hell yeah. Flip it again. Overconfident. Can we do three? Hell yeah, we can. That's awesome. I'm so glad I didn't screw that up. <laughs> that would have been one of my ingredients all over the floor. Then there only would have been two glasses today. But yeah, so the it's a rather it's a rather simple cocktail. It's just got three ingredients in it. They're all simple parts. And so I thought to get the most bang for my buck that I'd try it with a couple of different types of one of the main ingredients, that being the spiced rum. It calls for spiced rum. I've heard many different like, like, um, criticisms of Captain Morgan or spiced rum that isn't spiced by your own. You can literally put rum combined with vanilla or cloves or cinnamon into a container and let it sit for a couple months and you've got your own spiced rum exactly this way that you want it spiced. Um, and I think that's mostly where the criticism comes from. Personally, it's been a hot minute since I've used Cat and Morgan spiced rum, but um, we're gonna use it today. I'm also gonna use some falernum, which is like a dark rum combination with a couple of different things in it. I think there's cloves in there. There's definitely some cinnamon, potentially. I think there might have been something limey in there. I don't exactly remember what goes in falernum, but uh, it's falernum and I made it myself and it's probably gonna be okay. And the other rum we're gonna use is this this pineapple coconut rum that's been flavored oddly with pineapple and coconut. It's not very good. I've been trying to find a reason to get rid of it and I suppose we're gonna try pineapple, coconut, bananas, cinnamon, spiced rum martini. Hmm, we'll see how that goes. All the bottles almost empty. All the bottles almost empty. That's true. They are. I don't use, I guess, because whenever I get to the bottom of the bottle, I think to myself, like, do I really need to use the last of this? Like, can I, can I keep it going for just a little bit longer? And the answer is yes, because I just leave it on my shelf and I just don't touch it. Being that we're making three different combinations of tonight's cocktail, I'm going to use three different shakers. I have the pint glass, which we'll use for the visual aspect of things. I'm going to use this rainbow... Joe's Crab Shack shaker, which I keep telling myself, I don't know why I'm using it. It doesn't look that, it's it's just, it's dingy. This would break if I dropped it on the floor, but it's pretty and it's rainbow. And then we have this, this, um, oh, excuse you. Yeah, this pink plaid shaker, which um doesn't seal very well, but it was a gift from one of my coworkers. And honestly, you gotta appreciate that. You really do. So let's take one ounce of cream liqueur. I think you could probably use any cream liqueur, but if you can put cinnamon in it, then that's the key here. Um, it also says specifically for um, horchata, which I don't know much about horchata, but I'm pretty sure it's like a Hispanic drink that is cinnamony. It's like cinnamon, like hot cinnamon milk, I think. Um, I don't know much else about it. I've always wanted to try like an authentic like horchata because I think I fell in love with like chai teas, like the chai that you would get when you order it like any coffee bar, at least here in America, I guess. Um, I don't know how it is in other countries, come to think of it. I wonder what would happen if you ordered a chai tea elsewhere, if it would have that kind of cinnamony, spicy taste to it. But I feel like it's kind of, it's similar, similar in a way, although not very tea forward. It's more, I guess, could it be chocolatey? Maybe? I'm not exactly sure. I, I am not up to my, my history of horchata. It's not a particular ingredient that I come across very often. Um, and honestly, don't get to use it in cocktails very much. I usually stay away from the really sweet cocktails, but I've been on a sweet roll recently. Sweet roll like Skyrim. Not really. But I have been on a bit of a roll there, I think. Usually I'm into like shorter drinks, but I don't know. I don't know what's been into me lately. I've been fruity. Been fruity kind of recently. And I like fruitiness. Nice. What I've been doing recently is anytime that I go to, we've been going to the ice cream bar uh, quite a bit. But, um, and I would always get, I don't know why, but I'm oddly obsessed with strawberry, the flavors of strawberry and banana recently. Every time we go to the ice cream parlor, I will either get strawberry, banana, or some combination of the two. I think at one place there was a strawberry cheesecake, and that was pretty good, and I like that very much. 
It was great and wonderful. I just noticed I have to put some ice in these guys. Not in this one, I'll put it in the other one, but I will put some ice in there. There is cream going everywhere. On the bright side, I have a towel. I can clean it up if need be. If it gets into the book, that's a bigger problem. But if it gets to the table, it's fine. This table is gonna be gone eventually anyway. I think I mentioned last week, but I actually did pick up a bar. Like an actual bar. <laughs> it's technically not a bar. It just looks like a bar. And to be perfectly honest, it's technically a home entertainment setup um, where you like, you know, you, it's got the space in the back where you can route your cables and you could probably put a DVD player in it, but it looks enough like a bar that I'm calling it a bar. And we'll use it as such when I actually have a chance to use that. Do you have clear ice cubes? I don't have any clear ice cubes. I use these silicon trays just, they work okay. I think the clearest ice cubes that I have are these tiny little ones. No, they're not clear. No, it's, it's as clear as I can get out of clear of these glasses, honestly. A man of fine taste with huge ice cubes. You've got a similar tray. Ooh, that's excellent. I also have, by popular demand, spherical ice cubes, but they're in the fridge and I don't, I'm not gonna use them today. Uh, they're mostly for the nicely, uh, I like uh, I like to use them as part of the garnish. Garnish, not really. It just, some spherical ice cubes look cool in some cases. They wouldn't look cool in this case. This cocktail book doesn't say that I need to put any ice in the glass, so I'm not gonna put any ice in the glass. I'm a kind of cooking by the book kind of person unless I find problems with it. And so far, I have not found a reason to be angry at the, um, the Delicious Disney Sweet Treats book. No problems yet, of course. We can always find some later on. The next ingredient that we've had to our cocktail... <laughs> I can't speak. The next ingredient that we have to add to our cocktail shakers is going to be the rum of our choice. The first one is going to be that Captain Morgan. It calls for spiced rum. We will use spiced rum. It is what it says. I don't usually do things like that. But if the recipe calls for spiced rum, who else should I turn to than the captain himself? Actually, it's actually shined, signed Henry... Henry Morgan? I think it actually says Henry Morgan on there. Hmm. I didn't know ca the captain's name was Henry. Hi, cutie pie. Hi, sweetie puff. I hope that lands well. I felt like that was a pretty good analog to that. How's it going? How's it going, Guidoni? I hope your Wednesday is going well. My Wednesday is going... Pretty good, all things considered. By the way, we'll need a single ounce of the spiced rum or about 30 milliliters near our cocktail shaker. That smells pretty good. Hey, that's pretty good. My, uh, all, in all honesty, my Wednesday has been pretty okay. I went to work today. It was very, very busy. Uh, the past couple days have been very busy. We're in, I think I think what my, my C-suite would call it is war mode in the sense that we're trying to optimize on all of our tasks. We're trying to make sure that we're focusing on things for eight hours a day, every single day, five days a week, except for the weekends, but sometimes on the weekends, depending on what the needs may be. I, for one, had to put in a couple of extra minutes after, a couple of extra minutes, like a half hour, 40 minutes more after I got home today because things are, things are wild. There's a lot of things going on and we can't be slow on some things. If we're too slow, we lose money, maybe. That or like, we just wait till another day. Honestly, I don't, I'm not of the level where I am super stressed about that stuff. So I'm feeling okay. But, um, you know, I did have to stay late on at work on Monday and my bicycle, there's actually a lot of shit going on in my life right now. That's crazy. Let's start. Let's start by adding the next cocktail ingredient. This glass here is gonna get the spiced rum. This glass here is gonna get falernum. It's cool because it rhymes with rum, sorta. Falernum, rum, it works. I made this apparently back in April of last year. It's still good, There's nothing wrong with it. It's alcohol, it's not gonna go bad. I mean, actually, if there is liquor that goes bad, I need to know about it. Aside from, aside from like, um, I guess technically fortified wines would be, uh, that would be vermouthy. Fortified wines, vermouthy, they can go bad. The creams can technically go bad, but do you ferment your own booze? I don't, I haven't gotten a chance to try to ferment things my own yet, but I do have a buddy of mine who recently got into, um, into making mead. And when I see him next, I'm going to ask him about it because I really, really want to know how to make mead. If I were to make anything, I think the only thing that I've attempted to ferment is, um, I think I tried to make vinegar once, but technically that's not fermentation. Is that considered fermentation when you take wine or vermouth and turn it into vinegar? Because if that's the case, I have done a little bit of fermenting at home. I mostly just do infusions and stuff. And even still, I don't do those that often either. 
Although, it's a big advantage because I'm the kind of person who will forget about things very soon after doing them, and when I put something in a, in a bottle and put it in the corner, I very easily forget about them. Like, I think I have this concoction of... Oh my god, what's it called? Nochino. It's called Nochino. It's a black walnut liqueur. It's been sitting half completed for the past, like, four months now. It's been ready to combine with the other, I think, cinnamon syrup I think I need to put it in for about six months. And I just haven't touched it yet because I forgot about it. I also, it's it's not very easy for me to get to the containers that I need for it. It's, my apartment's a mess. That's why I'm moving. <laughs> very soon, actually. Oh, friends, we got like a month from now. I talk more and more about it every day because I'm so looking forward to it. And the madness of having to move everything around because I have this whole thing we see here. We'll be gone in like a month. We'll, we'll figure things out. Maybe a month and a half. Maybe a month and a half, depending on it. Yeah, I guess technically. So the first day of the new lease starts on August 1st. And, but the last day of this lease ends on August 31st. So we're gonna figure out that month span where we're kind of moving things over a little bit. And then at the very end, we're gonna pay some people to take like the couch and my desk and other large pieces of furniture, not the fridge. Can't take the fridge with me, unfortunately. They have a fridge there. Of course they have a fridge there. That's, that was the joke. They have a microwave there. They have a microwave. Oh, we, do we don't need to take our microwave? Well, we're taking it, we're not living in here. Yeah, yeah, I like my microwave too much. No. Can okay. we take our toaster? They don't have a toaster over there. Yes, we gotta take our toast. We gotta take our toaster. toaster. That's our toaster. It's Mickey Mouse. It's our toaster. It was bought for me. It was bought for Anna. But we are, we are. Who dat with you? Oh, that's my fiance. <laughs> Her name is Anna. She's the Disney queen in chat, and she's beautiful. Take a look at this beautiful oh, I, hand. I'm not oh, there. beautiful, beautiful it's hand. Not shower. That's yeah, well, I mean, wait, 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 put your put your ring in the photo. You can do that. Yeah. <laughs> You know what they say, if you like it, you put a ring on it. And that's why I put a ring around every single one of my cocktail glasses. What are you talking about? Don't you know? Yeah, that's a lie. There's not a single ring around any of these. Well, I guess you win. <laughs> the next ingredient that we need to add to our next shaker, because this one's got the spice drum, this one's got the uh, falernum, and the other one has is going to use this calico jack pineapple coconut rum that I'm pretty sure I've had for almost two years now. Not a big fan of it. Don't use it very often. It's it's rare that a recipe calls for pineapple coconut rum specifically. Sometimes they'll call for coconut rum, but naturally you wouldn't use this because it's got the added pineapple to it. You would use Malibu in that case, and I have plenty of Malibu to spare. There, I don't think, has ever been a moment where I didn't have at least a three-quarters bottle full of Malibu in my apartment for various different reasons. It's very good, and I love the taste of it. And I'm sure there's some better option out there, but... I don't know about it, and I, I don't know like if I want about it. I love Malibu. It's sweet and coconutty. That's my favorite part about it. It's the whole coconut aspect of it. This one here is pineapple coconut, and it actually smells very interesting combined with the smell of the uh, cinnamon on the horchata uh, cream liqueur, but it's going in there. This is supposed to be a wild card because I don't know what cinnamon, banana, pineapple, coconut is going to taste like together, but by golly, golly gee willikers. We're gonna find out today. And then you'll tonight. fry them all together, just a little bit, and try that one, right? I like the idea. I like that idea. I like the idea of combining all three of them together in like a small little shot glass. Oh, a tiny little cordial glass? Thank you, dearest. No, let me just We're gonna combine a little bit together in this little tiny little. It's a shot glass. It's a, it's a shot glass with a stamp. It's beautiful, and I love it. It's so cute. I have four of them, but only one over here. But that's okay. That's fine. All right. The next ingredient that we will add, combined, uh, shared between all of these glasses here, is some banana liqueur. I'm sure by banana liqueur they mean creme de banana, or something a little less strong than that. I have 99 bananas, it's 99 proof, and it schnapps, and that's the, that's, that's how my week is going right now. Let's put more alcohol in these glasses. Honestly, so another thing that you might have, uh, aside from, I mentioned I have sunburn earlier. I am very sunburned on my back. I was sunburned on my face. I, uh, I reapplied three times at the beach the other day, uh, but when you go in the water, it doesn't matter how many times you reapply, you need to reapply, and I didn't reapply, and that was my mistake. Also, the waters of North Carolina, which is where I was on Saturday, are were so tumultuous this weekend that I actually lost my Fitbit entirely. I do not have a watch on my arm at all. It is completely gone. I went for my accessory cabinet and I found three watch heads. Every single one of them is out of battery. So I have no way to tell the time aside from doing the very, very modern thing of taking my phone out only to see what time it is, which... I don't know. I'm not very. I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that aesthetic there. I'd rather have a watch. Watches are classy. We need one ounce of uh, liquor. Liquor of banana. Whatever liquor of banana you have. One ounce. Thirty milliliters. 
however you choose it. There are probably other conversions out there. I don't have them. Hey Google, what is 30 milliliters in ounces? No, pints, pints, give me in pints. Sorry, I don't have any information about that. That's okay. But I found yeah. something similar. Hey Google, stop. Do you want to know how many? No, I don't. I don't want to know. I do not want to know. Although I do still kind of want to know. Hey Google, what's a single fluid ounce in pints? I don't know that can Here is some the information from the web that might possibly help. Why wouldn't On you the give me the number? Hcalculator.com, they say the US fluid ounce is a unit of volume equal to 1 16th of a pint or 1 8th of a cup. 1 8th of a cup. Now we know two conversions that I didn't know before. I am very not knowledgeable. The they were the American conversions. Did I put the banana on all of them? Yep. 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 Did I put the banana on you? Hmm. I hope I did. I can't remember, honestly. But I think I did my job okay. So now we have in three different glasses, we have a banana spiced rum martini from a Disney cookbook that combines horchata cream rum or cream, cream liqueur. It's cream liqueur. Or try to cream liqueur. Yeah, spiced rum in one, Captain Morgan. We have falernum in the other one, which I made up on my own with probably Myers rum, or it might have been a, Go a Gosling's Black Seal. Not exactly sure. It was back in April of last year. I've completely forgotten. And then the other one, we have pineapple coconut rum. So we'll see how that goes, honestly. This is this is the glass that I can't tell if there's any banana in there already. Actually, I catch, a, I catch a whiff of that already. Because the falernum is super, super duper potent there. It smells like a very, like, alcoholy cinnamon that goes right into your nose. And cloves. It kind of smells like Christmas. Why are you shaking it? Is she shaking it prematurely? I can't believe yeah, her. Yeah, it's banana. It's banana. She Slight said banana. Slice banana. I believe her. Let's cap these guys off and give them a shake. The wettest of shakes. Very, very moist shake. Not a dry one. We don't got any stuff like that. I hate this... See, I hate this. Oh, it actually stayed on. This Joe's from just Joe's Crab Shack Martin like uh, shaker. Like the top will pop off because actually it's not popping off this time, and I'm actually very happy about that. And then this last one goes right up on top. There we go. I kind of spilled things around, but that's that's okay. We're gonna deal with that anyway. All right, let's give him a shake. I don't know which one we're gonna try first, but I look forward to it. Oh, I kind of made a mess with that one. Oh, well. The spiced rum one. That is kind of going all over the place. Oh. Well, we try our best. Also, I've made a complete mess of my foldable table. It's okay. I have a towel. What are you doing? I got a towel. Oh, thank you so much for helping me, dearest. Yeah, you're very in my much, way. I very much appreciate you. I'm going to put this down right here. Right here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the assistance. Now I'm going to shake the plaid one. <laughs> Plaid's my favorite color. This one's got a funky sound to it. All right, that's been shooken. Shaken and shooken. Just the way... I was going to say, just the way Papa likes it, but I didn't want to say that, but I said it anyway. Because we're live, baby, we're live. And now the, the rainbow one, just crab shack. Honestly, this one feels like it could break just by me shaking it too hard. That's not rainbow. It's, it's like, it's got a many colors on that's, it. That's, um... It's got the blue, the pink, and the yellow. That's pansexual. This right? is very pansexual. <laughs> Thank you, Joe's Crab Shack. Appreciate that. All right, let's um, let's put them in glasses. I have three different glass candidates. Personally, I am gonna rank them as what I think is gonna be the best one. This is the Captain Morgan in it. I don't think it's gonna be to my liking. I'm gonna give it the most plain glass that I have. Just a normal martini glass. I picked this up the other day. It's small. It's the right size. It's exactly the size that I think Captain Morgan would deserve, at least in my category. I think the Falernum one is gonna taste the best. So I'm gonna give it the most detailed glass that I have, which is this really cool feathered like coop looking one, which now that I realize we can't actually see very well, I'm gonna pull out the other glass for this one, which is also kind of pretty, but it's not as pretty as that one. I'm gonna take out my yoga blocks to get things all set up just so we have like better angles. Let's see, let's put you on top of this block and then let's also try to, can we put, can we put them right in the middle? This could work. This could work. <gasps> this could work. All right. Right in the middle. All righty then. Thank you for the assistance, dearest. 
This is more help than I ever get from Anna. I just don't feel like working on the leech yet. You shouldn't work on anything yet. Nope, gotta work on the Take leech. a rest. Take a rest, my dear. That's not how that works. All right. What we have, I need my strainer, because this this one over here doesn't have a built-in strainer. The spiced rum. The spiced rum. Banana spiced rum martini. Uh, which, which seems to be in line with the name. So this is the banana spiced rum martini. In glass number one. No garnish on this one. It doesn't say that there should be one. And the only thing that I can think of with my crazy ass mind is an entire banana, which I'm not going to do. Or like a cinnamon stick, but I think we're out of cinnamon sticks. Maybe not. Anna, please, no, I don't need an entire banana. Okay, we have an entire banana. Um, we will find a use for that because it is here. I will, I will, here goes the banana garnish. All right, one whole banana. One whole banana on this one. Um, if we can find more garnishes for the other ones, that's what we'll do. But we don't. Oh, Anna's searching for something up there. Here is the banana falernum martini, which is very messy and getting everywhere because these type of... Wow, it... really? 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 Wow. Really. It's pouring out the side. <laughs> What's the best reaction? Incredible. <sighs> Plaid... Plaid shaker, why did you have to do this to me? Oh look, cinnamon sticks. Where did they come from? I don't know. They came from the ether. Let's add cinnamon stick garnishes to these. God, I made a mess. Oh my God, I made a mess. I'm so sad. It's okay. And that was gonna be the best one. I put all of my faith into the plaid cocktail shaker. Only for it to be ripped out from under me. Here's a cinnamon stick. Doop. Cinnamon stick, beautiful. Cinnamon stick, doop. <laughs> nice little clinking sound. Pineapple something. And this one is the banana, banana pineapple coconut martini. Bana banana pineapple coconut. Banana pineapple coconut. Banana pineapple coconut. Banana pineapple coconut. That's got a nice little. Ooh, are those coconut shavings? Yes. I had no idea we had those. They're for when I make coconut cookies, which I haven't done in a while. Man, where would I be without you tonight, dude? Just... You are you are all sort of Wait, sources of innovation. You put you took off my banana? They've all got banana in them. Unless you chop this in threes. No, not worth it. Could be worth it. Could be worth it. We're gonna put a cinnamon stick in this other one, because it's the pineapple coconut. Pineapple. Ugh. Pineapple, coconut, banana. Pineapple, coconut, banana. Flink. Wow. You can barely see that in there. Let's add some coconut flakes. Let's do it. Coconut flakes. Mmm. Coconut. I actually put those in your nut containers. Yeah, you did put it in my nut container. Context. I bring containers full of legumes, nuts, peanuts, cashews, apparently coconuts to work with me. And, uh, it's, it's, my, it's my snack. It's one of my many snacks. It's one of my favorite snacks, actually. I do like, I do like a nice zesty nut in the afternoon. Any case. So these are our three concoctions today. They're all technically the same drink. They're all just kind of riffs on each other. We have the banana spiced rum martini, the banana falernum martini, and the banana pineapple coconut rum martini. Um, the original spiced rum one came from the, uh, the, uh, the book. The Disney book. This book. This Disney book. It's got sweet treats in it. It's got a little mouse on it. Demonetize me. I dare you, Disney. JPEG. I want to see it happen. But I know it won't. Or maybe it will. Who honestly knows? I don't even know. Um, yeah. I'm gonna put the banana away. I don't think I'm gonna do anything with it. No, don't drop the little cocktail thing. I don't want to break it, but I might. I might actually break it. To create these cocktails, according to the directions provided by in the book, you have to combine one ounce of banana liqueur, one ounce of horchata cream liqueur, it's like a cinnamony, like a cinnamon cream liqueur, and then one ounce of spiced rum, or falernum, or pineapple coconut rum. The choice is yours. I don't know which one is going to be the best. I My bet's on the falernum, because I like the, that... that spicy note to it that's my own type of spice as opposed to a Captain Morgan which is not my own type of spice. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. They all kind of look the same. I think that the coconut one actually looks really cool come to think of it. I'm gonna take my obligatory my obligatory Instagram photo. Hi dearest, what you doing? I was gonna take Wait, I gotta take the obligatory Instagram photo. They look beautiful. An update available for my camera. An update's available for my camera. That's beautiful. Thank you, Google. 
I appreciate you greatly. Greatly, greatly, co greatly. I'm trying to say words here and focus on other things at the same time. I'm just taking a bunch of photos. It's what we got today. What we? Why won't you focus on the thing? You silly, silly thing. Silly, silly thing. That's not. That's blurry. There we go. And how about that one? I decided to take more photos of things in preparation. Okay, she's actually combining a little bit of each one into a tiny little glass. It's so cute. Thank you, dearest, for helping me out today. It's been a great help. I love that. We're gonna try first the banana spiced rum martini. Credit Disney, I guess. Ooh, that's good. That's really good. Wow. That's actually not that bad at all. Right off the bat, I get the cinnamon. The cinnamon is the first thing I get. It's that horchata cream liqueur in there that is really, really forward there. I also smell, naturally I still smell a cinnamon stick because I'm sticking my nose right up against it. You can't tell because there's an arm in the way, but alas, you just gotta have to take my word for it. I wonder if I can actually suck the cocktail out of the cinnamon I think stick. That's even. It works as a straw. Oh my God, it works as a straw. That is really spicy. Wow. I have some like, I have some sensitive areas beneath, beneath my lip this week. And wow, that burns the cinnamon. That's an interesting sensation. Didn't expect to get that. It's almost, so, so one of the things that I usually describe banana drinks as now is almost bubblegummy because I think that bubblegum flavor ha is like reminiscent of a banana. And there is actually a recipe out there and I think it uses banana liqueur, grenadine, cream and something else that i just can't quite get off the top of my head but when you combine those two together it makes a drink that tastes in my opinion exactly like bubble gum and it's amazing and it's actually in one of my cocktail books somewhere i don't have that book on me i threw it somewhere else i'm a i'm like i'm like sporadically trying to look for it to see if i can grab it but i can't but it's in there somewhere maybe um yeah it's good it's got that bubble it's got that banana bubble gummy taste to it but mostly it's got that, it's got that, it's got that spice for it. It's very, very cinnamony. I like it. I like it. That's very good. It's very, it's very spirit forward too. It, you can taste the alcohol and I can still feel the alcohol. And that's okay. I'm okay with that. This is the banana falernum martini. Wow. That right off the bat is a whole different kind of spice going on there. Actually, so in this one... I got the cinnamon first, the the very, very horchata forward cinnamon flavor. This one, I get the falernum first. What I get there is like, it's a, it's a cinnamon, no, 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 not even cinnamon. The cinnamon isn't the first thing. It's clovey, like Christmas almost. It's a spiced, it's almost like candy. It tastes kind of like caramel almost. Like this, this tastes like a cinnamony caramel. This tastes like cinnamon. Cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon liqueur, cinnamon with liquor in it. This one tastes like cinnamon caramel. The liquor flavor is not as potent. So it actually, I think the Valernum really does a good job of rounding things out there. That's like really, really good. I really like that. And maybe it's because, I don't exactly know what the percentage is on that Valernum, but it's, it's super, it is super duper potent. Like I could even smell it on that of how potent spice wise that was going to be. And I'm very happy to say, but it actually translated very well into the final drink product, which is great. Now, the last one is the banana pineapple coconut martini, garnished properly with some coconuts on there, shaved coconut. It smells even more bubblegummy than this one smelled. Probably because, oh, I think the other ingredient, it might've been banana liqueur, pineapple juice, grenadine, and cream might've created that bubblegum cocktail. Maybe, that seems to gel well. Well, let's give it a shot. I'm trying it. That one's kind of weird. That one's not as spirit forward as the other one. It's not as flavorful and it doesn't seem as balanced either. I'd say of all of all these drinks here, the one with the Falernum tastes the most balanced and also kind of the most unique too. These two are spirit forward. There's not a lot of sweetness that backs things up there. And it's probably because the Falernum actually it might have been made with a simple syrup like combo to it maybe not exactly sure i don't remember it's been so long but i do like that i like this one too this one is more so bubblegummy than this one but i taste the coconut on there 
the coconut is like a, a separate flavor that like doesn't really mix perfectly with the banana so it comes out more prominently so this one is cinnamony this one is very very cinnamony this one is almost like candy like caramel cinnamon and this one here is like a cinnamon and coconut or like a banana coconut the cinnamon's kind of lost on me in this one this one was pineapple coconut rum this one was spiced rum and this one was the falernum and this little shot here is going to be a little bit of everything together it smells mostly like it smells mostly like the, the like the horchata itself it smells like cinnamon it smells like that cream liqueur that i took out of the bottle let's try it cheers Ooh, that's interesting that tastes mostly like captain morgan that to me just tastes like a very off-putting spiced rum combined with potentially cream potentially milk that's what i'm getting on there there's no there's no real interplay of like flavors in this one like there is in the one with the full arnum but it's all it, but it's all right it's definitely shootable it's definitely shotable i'd do it again if somebody put it in front of me but i wouldn't necessarily re uh, recommend it so i think the let's see the final final verdict the banana spice rum martini Long story short, as I've been told before, and as I will share with the rest of the world, if you're gonna do anything like spiced rum-wise, you might as well spice your own rum. I was told, I learned that from just YouTube videos that I found on the internet of somebody saying, oh, you should spice your own rum. And I was like, oh, come on, but Captain Morgan really isn't that bad. It really does make a difference. And the difference there is purely your own. Like if you choose to add more sugar to your own spiced rum, or you choose to add something a little bit different or change up the ratios, it's totally your choice to do so. And of course it's gonna taste something like more that you want because you were the one who decided to create the particular uh, cocktail infusion combination for your own special uh, spike, uh, your own special spiced rum. That one has like a, it's got that, it's got that sentimentality for it. I'm actually kind of proud of that because that's that's my falernum that I made, somebody else's recipe probably, I don't remember, but it tastes really, really good. And I'm proud of it. I don't think of these three, if I had to guess which one Anna would probably like, probably be the middle, middle one because I think it's the most sweet and she's walking over to give it a try. So let's, let's give that a try. Meanwhile, I'll sip on the coconutty one. Thoughts? Not a fan? Okay. Got this funny, fungi face going on. I think she likes it. No, I don't. No, she doesn't. <laughs> you know that Thoughts? smell from Christmas? Yeah, exactly. That's it the that's like the that, that, But with the bitter alcohol, like... <sighs> That's it's like Santa drink drank way too much punch on Christmas Eve. No, no, That's no. what this tastes like, Dan. If it was punch, it would taste fruity. It's, it's like, like Santa has... drink way too much eggnog. Maybe? That's cool. Alcoholic e eggnog? If Santa stinks like... like a skunk. He's been drinking. That's the end of the story. That's what this tastes like. And personally, I think I'm a very big fan of a nice grizz grizzly bearded fat man coming into my house with the smell of liquor on his, on his mouth. I do not think that sounds great. We live in Philly, and I'm pretty sure someone... Well, I'm drinking it in that. the cup, and I'm actually quite a big fan of it. So I guess we'll have to wait until Christmas in July. That's next month. Or or just Christmas in December, like, like what normal people do. I'm a normal person. We do things normally around here. In any case... That was our cocktail today, everybody. Thank you for coming to the cocktail hour on Wednesdays at the bar. Um, I'm gonna try to see if we can make these things a little bit longer, but that's a, that's a story for after we move to the new apartment. I've actually been having more thoughts about how to change up like stream schedules and whatnot. And I think what I've kind of settled on is I wanna do more cocktail stuff. I'd rather have longer, longer streams where we do more cocktails, kind of like this, but not all truncated to the point where we have to stick with particular ingredients and keep them condensed like within an hour time but we'll see how things goes there's a lot of thoughts going on up here and that'll probably translate to a different stream experience different backgrounds different schedules whatever i don't really know there's been a lot of shit going on in my life right now and uh we're trying to figure things out a little bit around here i kind of hit that point where i'm like have i burned out i don't really know i don't even know what burning out is but uh that's why we have these one these nights like tonight where you just kind of sit back you have your cocktail once a week and you just chill out and you just vibe with people 
and thank you, people, for vibing with me. To everybody else out there, if you're interested in video games, you can stick around. We're playing Paper Mario on the Thousand Year Door, if you're into that kind of stuff. If not, and you're headed off for the evening, then that's totally okay. Have a wonderful rest of your night, if it's the night where you are. Perhaps the sun is rising, and it is the morning for you. Time zones are weird like that. In which case, may you have a wonderful rest of your morning, or afternoon, or dawn, or twilight, or literally any other time zone, time time, out there. May you all be peaceful, may you all be safe, and have a wonderful rest of the day. Party until next time, y'all. See you on the other side. Bye, y'all! Hey, it's the Crystal Star. It easy peasy, right? Right? Totally. Totally. Mario, look. Look, look, look. It's the Crystal Star. <laughs> Not anymore, you ain't cat, bitch. What? Did, did he just... Hey. What's going on here? <laughs> Man, if I look here, what? Or am I just good?